Well, hello, congregation, family and friends and Bereans. I pray that all is well with you and thank you for joining me for the broadcast. It's been a while since I have done a new broadcast, just got off of a wonderful life talk and just felt motivated and wanting to come on here and do a video that I've been thinking about for a while. And I thought, well, today's the perfect time to do that. You might notice by the title, uh, I'm asking the question, the Trinity, tr true or false? Is the Trinity real or not real? Now, I'm going to say this up front, that this is not a comprehensive, super detailed study. My goal and motivation in these videos is to hopefully get you to do your own Bible study, too, and to look into the scriptures. You always hear me quote the Bereans of Acts 17, 11 that says that they were more noble than others. They weren't smarter. They weren't richer by any chance. What they did was they searched the scriptures daily to make sure that what they were hearing was indeed true. And that's what I encourage you to do, whether it's me, another Bible teacher, your favorite pastor, a church you go to, whatever the case is, you owe it to yourself to be a diligent student of the Bible and to study on your own. Now, what I'm going to do here is go through three passages fairly quickly that support the idea of a trinity. And again, this is not a detailed study. The first place we're going to go, if you have your Bibles or if you're taking notes, we're going to start in Genesis chapter one, the first five verses. I'm going to read them. And I want you to see that even in the beginning, the trinity existed. Now, let me say up front before we start reading scripture, that nowhere in the Bible will you find the word trinity. It's not there. You will not find the word triune, which means three, trinity, triune. You will not see these words in the Bible. But simply because you don't see them does not mean it doesn't exist. Trinity means three. And if you are a Christian and you believe the Bible and you're born again Christian and you believe that God is in three persons, then you'll start to see through these scriptures that indeed God is not three gods. He's three persons in one God. We have God the Father, we have God the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and we have God the Holy Spirit, also known as the Comforter. Each one of them are God by themselves, but collectively they are also God. Now you may be saying, well, that doesn't make sense. Uh, you'd flunk a math class thinking three into one. It's what's known as a divine mystery. We cannot understand God. We're finite human beings. We can't possibly understand an infinite God. We accept it by faith. And we see in the scriptures and these passages that in the beginning, God was all together. There were three persons in one. Because there are some who don't believe in the Trinity. There are some who believe that Jesus was a created being at some point, that he didn't exist forevermore. And I dispute those, and I believe the Bible supports that they were together. So let's go to the word at the very beginning in Genesis 1, verses 1 through 5. Listen to this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, let me just say this. The word God here is the Hebrew word Elohim. That is a plural word. Doesn't mean plural, multiple gods. It means God in plural form. So right away, we know that it's not a singular God, just one God alone in one person. Let's continue. In verse 2, it says, the earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the water. Please notice here in verse 2, when it says the word Spirit, do you see it in your Bible? It's capitalized. Do you know why? Because that is the Holy Spirit. Yes, it's the third person of the Trinity. So right away, we're seeing God the Father, and we're seeing God, the Holy Spirit, the third person in the triune Godhead. Let's continue. Verse 3, then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, the darkness he called night, the evening and the morning were one day. Now, yes, God is talking about a physical sense, separating the light from the darkness. But as I've taught before and elsewhere on these videos and in Bible study, we can also see this spiritually with the light. And who was the light? 
Jesus told us in John 9, verse 5, I believe, he said, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. And so I believe we can see right here in the first day of Genesis that we see the triune God, all of the Godhead, the Trinity are here, God the Father and God the Holy Spirit, and Jesus is also here. God said, let there be light, and there was light. That was the physical light, but Jesus was already the light of the world. I want to show you, because another word for Jesus is the word, word. If you go with me or you're taking a note to the Gospel of John, chapter 1. We're going to read the first few verses at the beginning. This is John the Apostle, the Apostle that Jesus loved. Listen to this. John 1.1 1, 1 says this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Who is John talking about here? The Word is Jesus Christ. And John is telling us that in the beginning, the Word was with God. So he was already with the Holy Spirit and God the Father way back in the beginning in Genesis chapter 1, when God first started creating the heavens and the earth. Jesus was there. It says here also in John 1.1, 1, 1, the word was God. Now, you can choose not to believe that, but that's what the Bible is saying, and that's what the Apostle John is saying. The word was God. Jesus was not created at some point, where I think sometimes some people may get confused, is that Jesus was born of a woman. Of course, he was born through Mary. That was the Holy Spirit that did that. It was what's known as the virgin birth. And Mary was a virgin up to that time. She had not consummated anything with Joseph. And Jesus came as a result. This was a miracle that happened. And so in that sense, was Jesus created the way that we're all created? He was born. But Jesus, remember, he emptied himself of his glory and came as a human being. He came looking as one of us so that he could pay the penalty for us. So while Jesus was walking on the earth and he was growing up and he spent those 33 years here in human form, he never stopped being eternal God. He was fully God and fully man all at the same time. Again, that is a divine mystery and it's something that we need to accept by faith. John goes on here in John chapter 1. He says, he was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. And apart from him came nothing into being that had come into being. What does John say? That sounds a little kind of like a riddle. John is basically telling us that Jesus was right there at the beginning and nothing was created without him. Because he's eternal God. Because he's part of the Godhead. Because he's part of the Trinity. Because in the beginning, God, Elohim, that includes Jesus. All things came into being through him. So when God was saying, let there be light, let there this, and then we see the creation in Genesis 1, Jesus was there. He was part of it, being eternal God. Apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. Nothing happened without Jesus. John continues, in him was life. And the life was the light of men. There's the word light again. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He tells us as true believers, you are the lights of the world. Don't hide your light under a bushel, he talks about in the Sermon on the Mount. Verse 5 of John 1. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Doesn't that kind of go along with the first day of creation? God separated the light from the darkness. In a spiritual sense, I don't want to go down that road right now, but it's the believers from the unbelievers. We can see that in a spiritual sense. What I want you to see from these two passages are that at the very beginning, the Trinity or the triune God existed. It is hard to see sometimes, and it's hard to imagine that because we can't wrap our heads around three in one. But let me show you one other passage, and it's in Matthew chapter four. We're all familiar with the baptism of Jesus, right? You want to see a really clear picture of the Trinity where there's no disputing. If, if those other passages seem a little murky to you, or I did a poor job of explaining them, this is rock solid. You can't miss this. In Matthew chapter 4, 
beginning in verse 13. We have the situation where Jesus is coming to the Jordan River to be baptized by John the Baptist. And listen to what the Bible says. Then Jesus arrived from Galilee at the Jordan, coming to John, this is John the Baptist, to be baptized by him. But John tried to prevent him, saying, I have need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered and said, permit it at this time, for in this way it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he permitted him. Jesus is saying, these things have to be done. This is something that I have to do before I begin my public ministry. Now watch this in verse 16. After being baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. Now there's the second person of the Godhead, right? Jesus the Son. And behold, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God, there's the Holy Spirit, descending as a dove and landing on him. Get the picture? Jesus is coming up out of the water. He had just been baptized. The heavens open up. A dove comes down. It's the Holy Spirit and settles on Jesus. Now you have two parts of the Blessed Trinity. Look at the verse 17. And behold, a voice out of the heavens said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. There's God the Father. So in these two verses, what do we see? God the Father is speaking from heaven. God the Son came up out of the water, who was just baptized by John the Baptist. And God the Holy Spirit landed on him in the form of a dove. There is your trinity. I don't have to say anything else. You either accept the Bible as God's truth and God's word, and you see a very clear picture of the Trinity, or you are blinded, or you choose not to believe it simply because the word Trinity is not in the Bible. I've heard that argument. You can't find Trinity in the Bible. There's no way that there's three people inside one God. Here's a quick explanation that I was given when I wrestled with this question. Maybe it'll help you, and then we'll, we'll end the video here. Many years ago, uh, I heard this example, how three in one can fit together. Imagine you're in a dark room, and you walk into this dark room, and inside the room, sitting on a table, are three candles. None of them are lit. You're still in a dark room, but you go over, and you light the first candle. And suddenly, this dark room is illuminated. Suddenly, there's light in the room. And then you light the second candle. And you light the third candle. Did those other two candles actually add any more light to the light that was already in the room? No. The room has already went from darkness to light. But you see three candles acting as one light in the room. You see the analogy? Three candles, one light. And that's the way it was explained to me. And once I understood that, I stopped wrestling about how could, there could be three persons in one God. I simply accept it as the word of God. And so I pray that these, just looking at these very quickly, that this will inspire you to find other places in scripture where it talks about uh, the triune God, where you won't see the word Trinity, but you can see other places where God is interacting with one another. And so let me just challenge you to do your own Bible study when it comes to that. Well, I pray this, this brief video, this quick Bible study has helped you maybe understand the Trinity a little better. Please feel free to share the video if it has blessed you. Share it with someone else. Uh, Isaiah 55, 11 tells us that God's word does not return void. It reaches those he intends it to reach. So if it reached you today, if this ministered to you today, if you learned something today, then this video, this message, this Bible study was meant for you. Be a good, diligent Berean, Acts 17, 11. Study those scriptures and show that these things are true through the very words of God. Thanks for being with me. See you again soon. God bless you.